Hello, and welcome to the Three Links Oddcast, your podcast for all things having to do with Odd Fellowship. And now, here are your hosts. All right, thank you, everyone. You are listening to the Three Links Oddcast, brought to you by Pig and a Pug Bath Stuff. We are so happy to have them as a sponsor here on the Three Links Oddcast. It's great to have their support. It helps pay the bills to distribute this podcast to all of you. And right now they are getting their fall collection ready. Uh, They've just started making their fall scented soap. So be sure to check them out on Facebook and Etsy. That is Pig and a Pug Bath Stuff. I'm your host, Toby Hansen. I'm Ainsley Heilick. I'm Sergio Paredes. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, We are having a lot of fun and starting to find some success with this. Uh, Thanks in part to our sponsor, Pig and a Pug Bath Stuff. And Ainsley, I think you have a little update on how we're coming on our downloads. Yeah, so we are very interested in statistics over here at the Three Links Oddcast. And we just broke a major milestone Last episode, we thought we were going to pass 500 um, downloads before the next one. Well, we surpassed that, and we are over 600 downloads now. Woo-hoo! So we are very proud <laughs> nice. of that, and we hope to keep growing it. And make sure you share it with everybody you know if they are interested in fraternalism or odd fellows or anything like that so we can get some more ears on it. That's right. And uh, remember, if you're listening and enjoying, be sure and fill out uh, a review wherever you're downloading the podcast, uh, whether it's Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, maybe one of these Pandoras will get us approved and we'll get up on Pandora too. But wherever you're getting your podcast from, be sure and give us a review. It really helps us reach more members. And uh, Sergio, do you have any information about our international listeners? Yes, uh, we are traveling quite a bit. We have uh, about five listeners in Australia. We have one in Africa. We have 35 spread out all across Europe. So we're, we're definitely spreading out. So if you, join, if you visit our website, threelinksodcast.com, or wherever you get your podcasts at, feel free to just share the link and, and continue to spread that word. Um, we also have today's guest, which will be um, Jesse and, and Jesus coming from uh, Southern California Odd Fellows Lodge, San Fernando 365. And they will be talking to us today about um, bringing, bringing a lodge back to life and, and becoming an active part of the community again. Wonderful. Well, welcome, brothers. Thank you for joining us today. Why don't you go ahead you, and you. uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, Jesus, we'll start with you. Oh, thank you. As you mentioned, my name is Jesus Ochoa. I am currently the grant conductor for California. I joined our lodge in, uh, I believe it was uh, 2015, not too long ago, but I saw the, the, the benefit of having a lodge in the Brotherhood, and uh, I've been having a great time here. Excellent. And how about our other guest from San Fernando? Hi, my name is Jesse. Uh, I'm here, the treasurer for the past two years already. I, le- I joined the lodge in early 2017. Uh, I met one of the members actually golfing. Uh, and it's actually it's been great. Uh, I came in one of the pretty much the youngest one in the lodge and been able to turn that around successfully. So just excited to be part of this and excited. Thank you guys for having us. Hey, you are welcome. We are always happy to be out there collecting stories about Odd Fellowship and then sharing them throughout the world. All righty. So let's kick this off. So right off the back, uh, if you could just kind of share with us how the Lodge was before you joined, and that way we could kind of see where it started off and how it took off from there. I, I could give a little background. So back when I started like early 2017, uh, there was about maybe eight to nine active members that we had. It was it was pretty much it was it was on his last legs. That's what I you know that's what it felt like. Uh, we did have you know a couple a couple of the brothers that are, that started back when I started that are still active now, um, and it's just it's been a, it's been an up and down. And right now we feel like we've been really up with our membership wise. 
uh, it's, it's, we've been in the plus for the past, you know, four or five years already. Um, but it's been, it's been great. Ochoa, what do, what do you think? Yeah, so when I, when I first found the lodge, I was looking for a place to have a, another banquet. And I just happened to find it here. And I was very surprised about the group. Yes, there was only a few, but there were two of the actual, uh, how could I put it, uh, members that have been our fellows for a long time. There was only two. The others have come recently. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yes, there was only two at left, and the others that, that arrived were all brand new to the organization. And it was, like uh, Jesse said, on its last leg. And with the current group that we have, um, as we started out, we went and looked for people in the local business organizations, service organizations, and it's been very successful and we had a lot of great chemistry and we have been doing a lot of different projects and events together. For example, we participate in the parades and if you get to see our pictures of where in the parades, you, can, you won't forget who the outfellows are. We all are dressed up in uh, Christmas suits. You can picture that. Yeah, I see. I see the it's, pictures. It's a lot of pretty, fun. Uh, it's pretty Fantastic. bright. And uh, another thing that we, yeah, another thing that we've been doing is we've been going to uh, uh, Ensenada to an orphanage to deliver funds and clothing uh, for an orphanage that we sponsor. And so that, it's a lot of great things. But those are just two of them. Oh wow, that does sound that sounds uh, pretty amazing. I, I did notice when I when I um, started last year in 2019. That uh, oh, I started with um, my lodge, LA Golden Rule 35, and when I went to go get initiated at, at America Lodge, um, everybody talked about San Fernando and how they, you know, they're really like active. They're they're all over the place. A little, and then bit, when I, a little bit crazy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then when I got onto the um, your Instagram, then I started to see like the parades and and the banquets and then i i think you guys actually have like a, a halloween party i think can you share some of something uh, some more details yes. about that as well so we do have a we call it our uh halloween committee you know our halloween party committee um <laughs> last year was a great success we had a, a live band uh that played you know nothing but like you know early 90s and you know early 2000s just you know hip-hop and you know it, it was it was great uh, everybody was loving it. We had uh, a great success from it. We we charged at the door. We charged for the bar. We were able to, you know, raise a lot of funds. I think those funds were for the LA, uh, San Fernando Police Department. Is that right, Ochoa? Yes. Yeah. So we for the that, was, that was oh for the explorers. Yeah. So this is for kids that are the poli like police academy uh, for, oh, okay. for young kids under eighteen. Uh, we were able to raise funds for them, and it, it was a great success. It was, you know, we had a lot of people. Everybody was loving it. We were l really looking forward to it this year. But with mm -hmm. everything going on, you know, it pretty much is a shutdown. So, yeah, it's probably better play it safe this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, but definitely, I believe the one the year before was the, the machete one. Oh, yeah. We, we, had, we had another one. We had yeah, another one. No, that, yeah. So, that, the one be before that one, it was a, uh, it was a throwback party, and that's when we had, um, I don't know if you know, the actor that plays Machete. Uh -huh. um, so he, he came, he, he was uh, he was one of the one of our brothers, he's a really good friend with him. So he came and we did a sponsorship for him too. So we got a lot of action there. And I think what we gain most from those type of, you know, events and besides getting our name out there is, you know, it's pe people knowing who we are as, you know, as a lodge. And, when people pass by, they say, hey, that's not a church anymore. People thought, you know, for a long time, hey, that's a church. And in reality, we're not. That's, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're a brotherhood. We're uh, a family initially. And that's where a lot of people started noticing it. They don't see it as a church. It's like, oh, that, that's, I know where that's at. Yeah. Especially in our community. So that's changed quite a bit. Now, did you guys have any um, specific strategy as far as, um, um gaining new younger members because with, with most lodges especially the ones i've come in contact uh you know the majority tend to be uh, older 50s 60s so did you was there any kind of did you find like an audience i was looking for something like 
uh, the Odd Fellows could could offer or or anything to that effect? Maybe we we kind of got I think uh, Chua touched on it a little bit that we got really business oriented and we started going after those young businesses, those new businesses that are just starting and that want to you know make a connection with the community. That way they feel like they're a part of the community as well. It's not just a business that's here to make money. Mm. So we try to start attracting more of them. And, you know, one by one, they started coming and, you know, it, and it's a lot of new businesses you're going to get to know. It's like there are a lot of, you know, either the sons of the, the old business owners or, you know, people starting new and they want to start something for their own. So it becomes a, more of a tradition like, okay, let's be part of this so we can network, but at the same time, how the community, they see our name as well. What do you think, Ochoa? Yeah, one of the key elements of our recruitment was that we started to participate in the local organization. So it, it was a two, two exhort there because we were doing something with them and we were also looking for people that were interested in joining us. Um, obviously some organizations may feel that you're looking to take their members, but as we became involved with them, it was very apparent that it was a partnership. It wasn't about mm -hmm. taking anything from anybody. So it was a great way to go and the way we handle it, bringing somebody in, we have our, our meetings structured probably like most. Our actual, actual meeting is at eight, but we have dinner and drinks at seven. So okay. if you invite somebody to lodge, you're only asking them to come for dinner and drinks and they cannot stay. So they know that the commitment is short. If you like it, you come back. If you don't, you came and tried it and, and met some people that you probably had seen around, but didn't know who they were. But the, the good thing is that after doing it for a couple of times, because they have to be here twice before they're considered, mm -hmm. then people get to meet them and you get, get to feel the, the chemistry in the room or if there isn't. We want it to be a win-win. We don't want, you know, to just gain people for the sake of having numbers, but we actually want to have, you can quote me on this, I don't want more members. I want more up <laughs> Well, I, have a, I have a follow-up question for that. Um, what are some of the other community groups that you went and interacted with um, when you were going out and getting more active in the community and looking for members? I, I, I actually got, well, most of my experience, almost all my community experience from Kiwanis. I've been a, a member of Kiwanis from, since I was in college. And I moved up in the organization. And I'm still a part of it. So it's the most active uh, service organization here in San Fernando. And from that, uh, a couple of the brothers joined. I believe, Jesse, were you in uh, team, team referral at that time? Were you guys part of team no. referral? No, I, I wasn't part of anything yet at the time. We also uh, have, uh, besides uh, team, sense. team referral, the chamber. The chamber, oh, yeah, chamber of commerce. The, oh, the, the Merchants Association. So there is another group in downtown. And, and just to give you another, a great event, a great way for us to come out in the community. We organize with Kuanas, ourselves, and the Mall, uh, Mall Association, Downtown Mall Association, I believe it's called. We organize the first Chile Festival. Huge event, a lot of people there, and our name was out. And this, the second one, we were also participate, participated well. It, it only happened two years, but it was a huge event. You can nice. just imagine people coming down, food, drinks, everything is theme around chili, you know, spicy. <laughs> so the, the, the craft beer that was brought, it was a huge hit because they had to bring something that was related to spicy. And it was a big hit, and our name was out. You know, a lot of people had no idea that we were here. And now we're, I think we're the oldest organization in San Fernando. The city is 27 years younger than our lodge. Wow. So for us, we were here, and people drove by, and they thought it was a church, because a church actually used to rent it, and they had their sign in the front. And we used to have a, a lot of our lodges used to have the name Temple, the word Temple, part of mm -hmm. the name. So a lot of people always remember it. They think it's a church, it's a temple. <laughs> gotcha. Now that's a yes. really good example uh, for a lot of lodges out there. Um, say you have a small lodge, you've got 10 members attending regularly. You want to get involved in the community and you want to do some kind of an event to draw attention to yourself. If you don't have the manpower for it, 
find other community groups to partner with. Uh, Ainsley, I, I think, isn't that how you do the odd market in Tuscola? Um, so the odd market is, um, we are the primary organizers of it, but we will partner with other charity groups as like the, um, the beneficiary of the event. Um, but there are several events that we have done that are um, kind of co-sponsored events. Uh, the movie we did in the park a couple months ago was a co-sponsored event. Um, we've had a couple that were lined up and they ended up getting canceled. So, but yeah, we, we have done co-sponsored with other smaller kind of nonprofit or charity groups in our area that they, same thing, they don't have the, the manpower or the money power or whatever. And it's, it's easy to kind of bundle your sticks literally, you yes. know, um, to create a bigger, more successful event that benefits everybody. Uh, but I think definitely what you guys doing to, especially like events that have food involved are always, you know, a great thing and fancy beer on top. You know, that's a really good way to get the, that name recognition because the more you get your name out there and people get a better handle of it, then people will start coming to you without you even having to do as intense of that um, level of people finding. And I love that quote you just gave of, I'm not looking for more members. I'm looking for odd fellows. And I'm probably going to turn that into like a meme post or something. I'll have to find a picture Me. of you to go with it. And I'll, yeah, I'll definitely. I'm the, probably going to use that too. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I just typed that into my phone. I'm like, I'm going to make that into a meme or something. I just need to find a good picture of you to kind of put with it to make it all like artsy and stuff. But I, I love that sort of those little sound bites that are just so true. And the fact that you guys are specifically focusing on not just increasing your numbers of whoever walks in the door, but you have specifically rebranded almost the lodge to sp go after um, a certain type of individual. And that's a really wise maneuver because you're having that foresight and vision to think of not only the future of the lodge by going after you know, certain, you know, really targeting young business owners, but you're thinking about, you know, what kind of quality of lodge experience you guys want. And by bringing in people that are going to bring the lodge experience that you guys want is going to make you guys have a better odd fellow experience. So I think that's, you know, kudos to you for really coming up with a very clear and very like a laser focused plan. And I'm glad to hear more about it. I, I'm excited. So, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Another really great thing in there is you mentioned the Chamber of Commerce. That's a resource that not a lot of lodges think of. I'm a big believer in the local lodge joining the Chamber of Commerce. If you can spare it, send one of your lodge members to chamber meetings because if your chamber or any other organization for businesses, um, if they do the same thing as we do in this area, at each chamber meeting, they pick a different business or organization to talk about what they do and i've been the one to stand up you know bring some regalia and a few cool items from the lodge and stand up and talk about odd fellowship you know this is something that's been active in the country here for over 200 years now we've done a lot of local stuff usually lodges are really old parts of their community so you can be the group that had the first dance hall the first this you know we we housed the first school in town or we housed the first courthouse or, you know, we, we were a part of this community a long time ago and we're still here and we still want members of the community to come in our doors and participate in what we're doing. So that's a really, really smart thing that your lodge has done to be active in your local chamber. The chamber had the first, uh, recognition of the top organization of the year. They did it one time. And guess who took the nonprofit of the year? Was it the Oddfellows? San Fernando Oddfellows. Yeah! Awesome. Nice. Yay! Nice. <laughs> so there was some, uh, you know, recognition on the local paper and, you know, it's more putting, putting us in the, in, in the front of the eye of, of the community, which is it's what we want. A positive showing of our organization that people get to learn. If they only see the logo once or twice, Eventually, they will ask what that means. I wanted to also make the point that, that I, I wouldn't do my job if I didn't recognize that one of the problems that we have, as one of you just mentioned a few minutes ago, is that we have old buildings. I, I heard this on my first 
grand lodge appearance that one of the issues was old buildings. Our, our building has been 80% uh, renovated since I believe the last two years. So that's another thing that we did. We cleaned yeah. it up, we fixed it up, we dressed it up, made it really nice. If you don't do that when you bring people in, you know, most of the time uh, they would walk away. Or if you if you have it as a revenue source, you got to put money in it to get more money out of it. And it's working for us. Nice. Is so is that like the Wayne's World, if you build it, they will come type <laughs> deal? Pretty much. <laughs> uh, nice. that's, that's what happened. Um, yeah, you guys got a quick little tour of our lodge a little while ago. Um, yeah, it wasn't like that before. Uh, we had a really bad echo in there. Uh, so we had a, like a professional company come out, put soundboards, and, and you know, they, they do the, the certain things where they, you may know that it sounds not going to bounce off anymore. So we were able to do that. We did, you know, new flooring. So any revenue that we, that, like with rentals and stuff, like we just put it back into Zodge, and that's been, you know, building up our membership quite a bit, just giving that people that warm feeling like this is not some place old anymore. So. so with all the the community activity and all the re outreach, how how is a, a bef well of course before the pandemic and everything, how it was a, a typical lodge meeting? Was a, a lot of people tend to show up regularly, or or how was that um, translating into the new members coming into the lodge? Were they more active, or, or how how was that working out? Achua, you want to answer this one? Yeah, it, it's, it actually works out because as I mentioned, for, for the new members that we select, you know, we kind of uh, cherry pick most of the time people that are gonna fit in and, and have, a, have that we offer something that they want and they need. So we have a pretty good participation at the meetings. I believe up, up close to 90% of us show up for all the meetings. And oh, no, we nice. have guests. Yeah, and, and every, every time we usually have somebody visiting. As I said, when you invite somebody for dinner and drinks and your time commitment is at the most an hour and then you have to go, they, it's easier for them to make the decision. Say, well, you know, I've got nothing to lose and then I have to leave at a predetermined yeah. time. I'm not going to be <laughs> cooked to stay longer if I don't want to. So that's but, it's working out great. I'll also cut you off there, but it also gives them some type of like, it's like what's going on? Like it, it, it kind of leaves them wondering like, okay, why did I was only there for an hour and why can't I stay? It's like, it gives them some type of like, all right, maybe I do want to come back. Maybe I do. And also what we've been doing, you know, like you said, we have been cherry picking our, our new members because we don't want anyone that has their own personal agenda. You know, we yeah. do have a lot of members that, you know, that have mis businesses and that have, you know, great connections, but, we do have a lot of people that try to come in and they can just not help the community and just become just a business relationship, you know, some type of business relationship manager. And that's kind of following their own agenda where it's like everyone that's here now, they know they're here for the odd fellas. They're not, they're not here for their own personal business. They're not here to make money and all they're here to push this forward, what we got. And we've been able to kind of, you know, put those people aside and be like, Hey, this is not right for you. You know? And at the same time, it's like, we're able to find people like, they do have businesses, nothing comes up, and it's like we're able to help them in, in any way that we can, as well as members and brothers and everybody here. Yeah, and that should actually be like a, a testament to your, your guys' uh, presence in the community because, you know, in some parts, people are, are just dying for somebody to come in into a lodge and to be able to have the ability to be like, okay, well, you know, we know we need people, but we're, we're just looking for, you know, somebody – Who's yeah. who's really curious? That that's that that says a lot of, as far as the overall health of of the lodge too as well. So that's once again that's one of the things I I always heard since I joined was you know how you guys were really like doing your your thing and, and you know really doing a big community push and how it was paying like dividends and it was just really you know revitalizing your lodge and everything. So that that's really awesome. That's a lot of work that you guys are putting in. Awesome. I think uh, one of the things that is really telling for your success that you're having right now is how you're employing a multi-pronged approach and you're not just doing something once. And if it wasn't the biggest thing ever, you give up. You keep doing different things and you keep repeating and being consistent of making sure it's more just consistency, getting your name out there and getting recognition and having people come in. 
And I think where a lot of lodges fail when they think that they're going to have, um, they're going to do something to get new members is they think all they have to do is this one event or they have to do this one thing or put this thing in the paper this one time. And they've done that. Then they're like, well, I, I tried, nothing happened. And they don't realize that it's a consistent process. You can't just do something once or twice and expect to have a permanent result that you have to keep doing it over and over, even when times are good and the lodge is having a lot of members, you still have to be doing all these things because you have to keep getting that name out there in good times and bad times and, you know, fast or slow just to keep that recognition. And otherwise five years down the road, you might be doing great now, but five years down the road, people might piddle away and you're not doing as much stuff. And then you end up right back where you were. That's so. very true. Um, speaking from my experience as a professional musician, you know, you get to a point where you feel like you've promoted yourself so much that everyone should know who you are, so everyone should just automatically call you for gigs. But in reality, the way it works is even if everyone in town knows who you are, they don't necessarily always think, oh, I need to call this person. And so that's why repeating the message is so important. I've talked to lodges in my jurisdiction here in Washington that say, well, we need to have a big party and invite everybody and then we'll get members. Well, no, you need to have many big parties where you invite many people several times. Because what happens is one event may happen and you may pick up some members, but if you only ever have one event, you're not going to make the kind of lasting impact that tells people this is an ongoing living organization that you want to be part of. It says, well, we had fun once and that was enough. You have to keep repeating that. You have to have regularity. One thing that I've found is lodges, when they start to weaken and they, they're starting into the death spiral, that's where they start pulling back and they say, well, we don't have the time or the money. We can't go out and do this. We've got to be really conservative and pull back and let's put the regalia away. We'll sit and meet around the kitchen table and we'll, we'll skip all of the passwords and we'll just do as little as possible. Well, lazy. If, you, if you take all of the interesting and I would say meaningful parts out of Odd Fellowship, what's left it's a business meeting you know people have enough business meetings in their everyday life you need to make sure that your lodge is consistently thinking about what happens outside the halls of your lodge outside in the community is there a sign on the sidewalk on meeting nights that say odd fellows meet here are you participating in your community park cleanup day and when you do do you have t-shirts that say odd fellows on them so people know who you are. Just to tell a little story, there's a little town in the Columbia Gorge uh, named White Salmon, and they have an Odd Fellows Lodge, Goodwill Number 188. Every event that happens in that town, the members of that lodge volunteer for, whether it's a hog auction to support the local high school FFA program, or their spring parade, or their cleaning up in the park, after the 4th of July picnic, there are always odd fellows there and everybody in town knows about them. And that's how you can have a town of 2000 people and have a lodge with 20 members because when the lodge is always out there and people are always seeing it, they are reminded, oh yeah, I was going to think about joining that. And that's, that's when you can make that contact and really bring them in. So when you guys talk about membership for me, it's not just the mere fact of bringing them to the door, which for a lot of them, they spend all the energies on getting people to the lodge. Um, you get them to the to the room, but you gotta keep them there. It's usually what happens that they get to the place, but then you have to do things to keep them there and keep them happy. And this is what they wanna do. You give them something to do. You look at their interest and assign them something that's related, pertinent to what they like to do. and. Most of the time, we give somebody new a job and this is what they like to do. You can see the transformation immediately into somebody that's going to yeah. stay in the lodge for a long time. Let, let me touch base on that a little bit. So, perfect example, we have a lot of brothers that are into that, you know, they're, they own construction companies or 
you know, they, they've been in construction for many years. And we, we put them in a committee, you know, to upkeep the lodge. So when it comes to like anything that's broken with the lodge, we'll call them, hey, the toilet broke, you know, can you come fix this? Can you, can you come, you know, or, you know, one of the doors is coming off. Can you, you know, can you come and, you know, donate some of your time and, and get this done for us? And since that's something that's their trade and that's, you know, not only they're helping the community, but they're doing something that they like, they right, right away they'll come and say, like, okay, I will, I'll be there. And we had great success with that and being able to, you know, it's a give and take. With I think with nowadays, anything is going to be a give and take. You know, they give us their time and, you know, we give them a, a an affiliation, we give them brotherhood, we give them, you know, another family that, you know, they can just push into the community, so. Nice, nice. Now, how is the the response for, without going into details as far as like rituals and do you see people embracing the rituals or is that just kind of something that people no, we, aren't we, really too interested in in that part? No, because, you know, like I said, like we have a, two OG members, like we, we call them, original members that we kept this, you know, a lodge open that come to our meeting before COVID um, and pretty much kept us, you know, to our rituals, kept us to our tradition. And we never stayed away from it. We never, you know, we, ne- we were never scared to, you know, put on the regalia. We were never scared to, you know, do the what we needed to do to make sure that we kept the tradition and the rituals going. Funny story uh, I'll touch on. We did, we were doing initiation. And when we do our rituals, we go hard. We go all out, very intense, to the point that we scared somebody out of our ritual, or out of our initiation. Oh, good job. He wow. ran, like he, like, it's like, he ran, he's, he's like, no, I, I like, you know, you're, you're about to, you're about to enter the lodge. And he's like, nope, can't do this, gone. Yeah. Like you could, he was sweating, sweating, like it's like sweating and, and you can see he was about to pass out. But the thing is like, when it comes to, you know, initiation, first degree, second degree, whatever it is, we're going to go, we're, whatever the ritual says, we just try to 10x that and uh-huh. take it to, you know, the next level that we can do, you know, if it's involving music, involving, you know, some type of, you know, animals or make, make just making, making it more, more than it is. So memorable. that memorable. is yes, that's it. awesome. I love to hear that your degree work was so impressive that somebody got scared. That's how yes. you know you're doing it right. Before they even started. <laughs> yeah. Yes, before, yeah, and inside it wasn't bad, but just the preparation, you know, just asking them questions like, hey, you know, you're not allergic to goats, you're not allergic to dead cat, like, you, poor if you're okay with that, like, just, just to get them in, just get, get them in their headspace, and it, it, it scared, it scared quite a bit, you know, it scared him, and that's never going to be forgotten, so. <laughs> I, got still dri- I think he's still driving, so. You know, speaking of goats, what an opportune time to mention uh, another excellent podcast for Oddfellows, Modern Goat Rider, produced by Josh and Billy up at Columbia Number 2 in Victoria, British Columbia. So if you're listening to this one and you like it, make sure and check out Modern Goat Rider. So with the, with the, your initiation, do you guys have to put like those old school disclaimers from like Grindhouse films or, or uh, how's that worked out? <laughs> Almost, you know, we make them sign an NDA you just, you just, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, now, in, they, have, in, uh, they have like an extra line added in the preponderance yeah. book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you t- guys talk about the degrees and all of that, I, I just have to say that we made a decision at the lodge that we are against using videos. We want to do it live. We want the brothers to participate. There has been emergencies when we have to make the decision to, okay, we have to do it. That's the only way. But by far, everybody agrees that we have to do the live one because then all of us go through the paces and remember some of these things we live them and we are part of bringing somebody in into you know whatever degree might be it's memorable for all of us not just the person i think we all agree 100 percent with that statement yeah Yeah, 100 percent believer in the dramatic degrees for many reasons but mostly for me it's because the degrees are a way and especially the initiation of bringing us together as brothers and sisters because we've all had that common experience. If your experience of joining the group is sitting down for 20 minutes and watching the video, now I understand Walker Lodge in Philadelphia does beautiful degree work, but it's not as impactful to watch someone else go through it as it is to experience it. You know, the first time you see something in the lodge hall, 
and it's very shocking and surprising to you, that makes an impression. And of course, we don't mention any of the secrets here on this podcast, but it's having that experience of, whoa, what is that? That is one of the, the first moments when we bind together with our new initiates. And when you go through the degrees and you learn those lessons in a very visceral, dramatic way, that is a big deal. It is really, really impactful. And that's what helps to knit us together as a fraternity. I think one of the things, I mean, there's so many things about the live performance degrees that i think make it more impactful but one of them you know i mean you mentioned that it bonds us together but even as a person watching the degrees for the first time even there's a lot being thrown at you and you're not going to catch it all a lot's just going to go right by you but the fact that you're seeing this group of mostly probably elderly people taking their time to as best as they can act these roles out for you with the costumes and the, you know, movement about the room, et cetera. And just the, the thing that struck me the most was, wow, these people really, really care about this so much that they could just be chilling at home, but no, they decided to drive three and a half hours, four hours or however far away to get here at 10 in the morning on a Saturday. So they could put on these outfits and read these parts out and try to convince the, you know, however many people are in that room for the first time that this is something very important and valuable. You don't get that from a video. That's something that you only get when you see that dedication of the members. I was very fortunate to have come up in a lodge in Seattle where they took degree work very seriously and people practice their parts. They come in and do actual real dramatic presentations of the degrees you know you believe in the madness of king saul you you believe in those moments that are presented in the degrees because that wonderful dramatic presentation and i think that is just essential because not only does it dedicate the demonstrate the dedication of those members it shows the candidate that these are really important parts of odd fellowship It's not just a social club. Our number one job is to take care of each other and be there in our time of need. And that is a super important part of Odd Fellowship. I think one of the impressive things that I heard uh, from our San Fernando brothers is supporting that orphanage in Ensenada. That is such a classic Odd Fellows endeavor. You know, we are literally educating the orphan right there. We are taking care of people who who don't have parents anymore. I think that is just fantastic work that you guys are doing. Yes, I agree. And the fact that you did seek out a charity that is so in line with the original commands of the order to actually find a orphanage to sponsor that's fantastic and i think that all the events that you guys are doing it's a great variety i think that it's a testament to what a lodges can do a lot of lodges can do to just try whatever they have an opportunity to try and if it works awesome if it doesn't work try it again you know and don't just try it once if it doesn't work the first time and i i think that just the consistency once again, that's just the word I'll, I'll keep preaching for growth is consistency. I, I follow you guys on Instagram, obviously, and mm-hmm. it's, it's fantastic. Like the more you guys post, the more that I'm able to then share onto the Odd Fellows Instagram. And then the more that that gets put out there for other members to see or other people from the outside to be like, oh, that looks cool. That lodge over there is doing some cool stuff. Well, there's a lodge in my town. I want to do cool stuff like that too. Maybe if I join, I'll get to do cool stuff. And it's just compounds on itself the more that you do and then it just spreads out and then other people see it and then they do more. And so that's exactly, you know, it's perfect what you guys are doing. Well, I think this is a good opportunity for us to take a commercial break and listen to a message from our sponsors, pig and pug bath stuff. We'll be back right after this. You can feel it in that late summer breeze. Autumn is just around the corner with its chilly mornings and cozy evenings. 
why not give yourself the gift of beautiful scented bath products? Pig and a Pug Bath Stuff is introducing their new fall scents for 2020. The soothing, calming smells of autumn are now available in all your favorite soaps, scrubs, and other bath stuff. Made of the finest ingredients right in rugged Missoula, Montana, Pig and a Pug Bath Stuff gives you a little bit of luxury in your everyday cleansing routine. The time is never better to pamper yourself than right now because they've generously extended their special offer to listeners of the Three Links Oddcast. Use the code THANKYOU24 at checkout, that's the words THANK YOU and the number 24 at checkout, to receive 24% off your purchase. Once you've tried the smooth, wonderful bath stuff from Pig and a Pug, you'll want to indulge in a luxurious bath as often as possible. Remember, Pig and a Pug Bath Stuff. Look them up on Facebook and Etsy and use the code THANKYOU24 at checkout for a 24% discount. Happy bathing! All right, we are back here on the Three Links Oddcast with your hosts, Toby, Ainsley, and Sergio. And we've been chatting here with brothers Jesse Garcia and Jesus Ochoa from San Fernando 365 down in Southern California. And Sergio, you got any more questions for our guests? Yes. So since we already discussed how you guys came about the lodge, how it was, and how you guys pretty much turned things around, um, the only other thing I, I wanted to touch on was how are you guys doing in the current situation with the pandemic and not being able to have large functions that, like you're used to having? So what we've been, what we've been doing, you know, these past couple meetings, um, we've had a couple business ones uh, via Zoom. Well, pretty much everybody, what everybody else is using, which has been working out for us good. Uh, we've had, you know, quite a bit of membership actually show up. Uh, I think, Sergio, you were a guest on our member on our meeting last, last time. I was, I was. It was very fun. Uh, you, you, you got to meet some of our, you know, our, our brothers. And what we like to do, and we, we like to keep it simple. It's pretty much just, just a, a check-in with all the brothers and just to make sure they're good, just to make sure everything's fine. If they need anything from other brothers, other members, or the lodge and, uh, ourselves, it's like, what can we help with? And just to make sure everybody's, you know, pretty much like a wellness check that we do with everyone. Uh, every once in a while and we have a couple brothers that they kind of check in on other brothers privately and say hey how you doing and you know just just to do an outreach and not not forget you know we're more than just members you know we you know we become brothers and we just like to check up on each other every once in a while you know and Mm -hmm. that again that's another traditional thing that odd fellowship has done in the past and that's mutual aid and assistance that is a really important part of odd fellowship and I am happy to see it coming back in a lot of our lodges. Now, I have a question for you guys. Since you've joined fairly recently in the last three or four years, how would you say the culture of your lodge has changed bringing it in a big group of new members? Because I know in some lodges, there's conflict about that. The older members are really distrustful of the new ones. Uh, did you guys have any of those kind of situations? I, I think most of us are the later category. I think all of us are the new ones because there was only two members that had been here for a long time. Uh, For example, Brother Jim, his father used to bring him here. His dad was a member of the lodge. And him and Brother Arthur were the only ones that were in the lodge for several years. That was it. And then there were other people that joined. And eventually we got to the lodge. So for most of us, we're, you know, very few years here, so we're all very new. So pretty much what happened is our old members jumped onto the new tradition. So, you know, like Brother Jim, he's been a member since 1956, I think it was. Wow. Like around there. Wow. Uh, and, and he's on the Zoom calls. I think you got to meet him too as well, Sergio. He's, he's on Zoom as well. He's like, you know, he has a granddaughter that lives with him. And nice. he, the, he was able he was able to, he's, and he's always on Zoom with us. He's one, he's one of the first ones that signs on. Uh, he's one of the ones that last to sign, you know, signs off. So go back on the other question. It's it's one of those just to stay connected. Yeah, that's that's a pretty powerful thing in, to have to where even though he's one of the OGs and been in there for pretty much as 
as, as old as some of our parents are, it's, it's kind of amazing that, that he, you know, embraced the, the change. And, and because of that, okay. ultimately, it, it paid off because instead of staying to their old habits and not necessarily rolling with the times, they actually, I mean, obviously, the, the lodge benefited from that, from being open and trying new new approaches so that that's always like that's a that's a really good thing to to be proud of to to be a part of a lodge that that's able to kind of adopt it and keep going and and just constantly uh work on itself that's always and really good it could be the way that your gatekeepers um which is another term that you know we've heard knocked around for the people that have kept the lodges the lights on and the dark years um for them too embrace the new people that readily is that probably that's the break or make or break moment for probably potentially for your lodge or any lodge that is in that situation that if new people come in and they're embraced and basically shown the ropes as quickly as you know uh, you know just to get them involved and give them the keys to let them drive it instead of saying no 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 which makes new people leave instantly and that's that's amazing that um your ogs or your your gatekeepers are the ones who readily were welcoming to that and i i applaud them for making that you know making that choice because that obviously is how you guys got to where you are right now and that's that's to be applauded yeah and it's not an easy choice to make either no you know it's it's not an easy choice for them to be like okay we're gonna let you know pretty much what it is, is a bunch of kids to to pretty much run our lodge where you know, what they saw, it's like, okay, well, the one thing that they want to, you know, pretty much, the one thing that we go to them is our, our rituals, you know, mm-hmm. so if we're, if we're gonna, if they're gonna trust us with our, the lodge, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna continue our rituals, and that's, we see that in our, our older members, and see, like, wow, like, it's like, do you see this, this, this joy, is like, our, our lodge is, isn't gone, our lodge didn't, you know, go away with time, it's, they see, it's like, okay, what are we building in, you know, we've we've heard it from brother, you know, brother Jim Miles a, a great great number of times. Like he's very thankful for what we've done. One thing that we've done on on their name and is we we have a scholarship for every year it changes. Every year, like this year, it would have been two thousand twenty dollars. So we, every year we we rise, you know, a dollar up. That scholarship is named after that. Oh, that's, that's fantastic! So that that's scholarship great. is named. Is it, so that, you know, just to, you know, give them our appreciation, like, hey, this is what you did. This is your, you know, th- your name's going to keep going, and, you know. That's so much cooler than a plaque or, you know, any kind of kind of wall right. hanging type thing to show appreciation. Not that those aren't cool, too, but you really kind of thought outside the box there to come up with something that not only shows appreciation, but it builds a legacy. Yeah. So that's fantastic. I'd like to share a little bit, since we're speaking of our meetings, not related to COVID times, but I just want to tell you one of the other things that we opted for doing. One of our uh, gatekeepers, Brother Arthur, was, was not able to attend the meetings for a long time due to the medicine that he was taking. So we decided to take some of the meetings to his house. Oh, that's fantastic to keep that's him involved great. and included. That's that's beautiful. And that little things like that that are like within yeah. the flexibility of a lodge are right. you can do these things within the rules of what we're given to be better odd fellows. And it's okay to sometimes bend the rules to be able to do things like that. And that probably yeah. meant the world to him. When, okay, when it, once it became uh, acceptable for us to do, but I, the reason I bring it up is because you can immediately identify that for him made a great deal. But the consequences for the new members to see this, they're they're probably even greater. Yeah, that's that's a good, that's a very valid point. I think that yeah. really speaks to something uh, that I feel very strongly about in Odd Fellowship, which is we are not just members. There is a real and true sense of belonging in the lodge. When you are an Odd Fellow, that really means something beyond just paying your dues and having a card to show that you've paid your dues. It means that there is a group of people that is out there and they care about you. And I've had the good fortune to be able to travel some and visit odd fellows from all around the U.S. and Canada. Uh, And I even got to meet the grand representative from Cuba, Sovereign Grand Lodge. 
and just having that instant connection. Um, you know, he speaks very little English, and my Spanish is so embarrassing uh, that I wouldn't even want to try and speak it. But just being able to get together and exchange what little information we could, thanks to Google Translate, and having that real and serious bond with someone from another country, from another part of the world, that's what really makes Odd Fellowship meaningful. We're not just members. We don't just get together twice a month to argue and pay bills. We really are part of something bigger and very meaningful. Um, so I've got some questions for you guys. Um, so tell me a little bit more about the dinners that you do uh, with the inter introductory dinners uh, with, uh, before your meetings where you would have a prospective person come in and meet everybody. Um, do you like how do those usually run are, are they usually like is there any kind of plan with them or is it more casual or do you you know ask you know certain questions of the like kind of like an interviewing committee ahead of time or like how do you guys kind of go about that just so other lodges can maybe kind of uh, use that as a template so i'll touch real quick just on the dinner part and then uh jesus can touch on the interviewing part uh, just on the food part, I, we do go all out. We do, you know, we do prepare the meals. We, um, uh, one of our brothers, he, he's actually a caterer. Uh, so we like to, you know, have him, you know, cater, you know, sometimes we have, you know, steaks and sometimes we have, you know, shrimp and, you know, we, we go beyond, you know, just doing pizza at a box. You know, we, we prepare meals here. We have, we have a kitchen. Let's, you know, let's use it. Uh, we, you know, we have, you know, we have, you know, sometimes we have just carne asada. We, we, do, we do a little bit of everything to Brother C. It's more than just, you know, okay, there's some donuts and soda, pretty much. That's, you know, and now yeah. it's like it's actual meals where it's like there you sit down and you're eating with uh, amongst, you know, brothers and other, you know, fellow members that want to become members and you're enjoying a meal. And, and I feel when you're having a meal, a meal, your guard is down. Your guard is down. So when you're asking questions, when you're, you know, conversating with them, it's like you're getting a true person compared to, you know, just a meet and greet. And I, I think Ochoa can touch on the interview part. So the uh, the key element that one of the things that we instituted is that anybody can visit for up to two flights. They have to be here twice before they can be considered uh, to apply. If if they have not been here twice, they have not met the brothers. That's the key part. It's not just being here, but to interact with the brothers twice and it's in our bylaws that then they can apply for membership and one of the things that we found out is when you get to feel the chemistry it makes the union more successful more standing because sometimes you know as i mentioned before people join any or we all do we all join many organizations and we end up finding out this is not what i thought i was signing up for so uh, it's, it's helped us a lot. So yes, uh, they're guests for an hour, food and, and beverage complement, and they can pay up to an hour and then uh, they can come back and visit us. And if they decide that this is something they want to do, then they can proceed with the application and then they, the membership, uh, the interview committee takes over. Thank you. Very good. Uh, did you guys also, um, before we wrap up, did you guys want to... Uh, discuss some of your uh, like kind of what you're doing for marketing to get yourself out there. Um, so like when you have an event or something, do you guys, um, do you guys put it in the paper or radio? Uh, like what are your social medias or websites, like all that kind of stuff so people can find you? We had been holding a casino night for the last few years, which is probably the, the biggest event that we have. And that one, for example, I, I put up ads on Facebook for the local area. So any any person in our area of a certain age will be probably be seeing it on Facebook. And we have a lot of people that click and actually go there. Uh, that's just to get the word out what we're doing. Uh, we go and put up uh, flyers at the local business, which m several of the brothers own business in town. So that's why we have them. We have a lot of people that support us and that's one of the ways that we do it. We have a, we put a banner up and. Well, a couple of banners outside so people see it as they drive by. And uh, smart. Now on Facebook, big big presence, a uh, brother Jesse. And I think yeah, else? Facebook, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you know, 
has, has been a very good, you know, useful tool for us uh, just to add members, uh, you know, have members come and, and check out the events that we're having and, you know, and little by little, they, they're seeing everything that we're doing and they get more intrigued and they want to know what, you know, what, what we are and what we do. And that's when you bring them for a meeting and, you know, and have them come in and, you know, start them there and give them, give them good dinner because they'll come back. Awesome. I know, I know at one point I had gotten an email through the IOF.org website about somebody that was in your area. And I was so thrilled that I was not only able to provide them with contact information to the lodge specifically, uh-huh. but I was also able to give them your website, your Facebook, your Instagram, everything. So I'm like, here, you could check out what this lodge does. They're very active. They do a lot of cool, fun stuff. So you could actually check them out before you actually go. So that way it's not scary. And I don't know if that person ever came through to you, but at least for me on my end of the world of Odd Fellowship, I was thrilled to be able to give them good information to show that like you guys are actually active and doing stuff. It's not like a mystery lodge where like you don't know where you're sending this potential person to like a kitchen table lodge or something where they just sit around and go through the meeting real quick like we were talking about earlier. So it's for me, I love being able to send somebody to, I know it's a quality lodge. And now you get to I, know what you get to know us as well. Exactly. Fantastically. Yep. Yeah, you can come here for the dinner hour. I guarantee you, you would want to come back. Yes. To the next one. Yeah. I yeah, want to come watch your you degrees. Come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I, I you, want you to come for it. dinner. And degree. Yeah, I know. I know. We got, we got to yeah. make plans for dinner and a gr- degree. That sounds like a great night. Yeah, we, <laughs> we definitely, I can tell you, I, I believe, uh, I remember up to four brothers that visited from other areas, including uh, for, from other countries. They were in town, they looked us up, and they contacted one of us, and they ended up coming and joining oh, yeah. us. We, we did have brothers from the Philippines come. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we had nice. brothers from the Philippines come. I think that was last year. And, and, you know, we did have a lot of members come. And, you know, so, like you said, it, it, social media is such, it's such a big help, and I think every lodge should be hosting, be, you know, you know, giving events. And even if it's just a simple, you know, hey, this is what we're doing today, or, hey, mm-hmm. this, is, this is happening in your community. This is how, mm-hmm. you know, there's a, a shoe drive, there's a, you know, a clothing drive, whatever it is, just so they know that who you are yeah. and they can tie you back into the community. It's like, all right, there's two and two go, go hand in hand. All right. Do we have any more questions for our guests here? I think that's about it. So that brings us to our ending segment called the odd podge where everybody gets to share whatever they'd like. It's kind of like good of the order at the end of a meeting. Now, this is our odd podge. I'm going to start. Uh, Because I have a big announcement here. Some of you out there know I am the Sovereign Grand Musician of the Sovereign Grand Lodge. And as part of my job of being the top musician in Odd Fellowship, I have written brand new musical arrangements of all of our odes. So there's the opening and closing of the Odd Fellows Lodge, opening and closing of the Rebecca Lodge, and the opening and closing of our encampments. Uh, For many years, it's been very difficult to find easy, readable, approachable musical arrangements of our odes. And so I've written all brand new ones. They are in PDF format. Uh, I've sent it out to all the grand secretaries across North America. And I do believe they're going to be going up on the Heart in Hand blog here pretty soon. So if you need new music for your lodge so your lodge musician can play the odes it's available now uh coming up here you know if i have some time in the next month or so uh, i'm also working on new recordings of the odes so if you don't have a lodge musician you can get one of the new recordings so be sure and uh, look out for some information on that when it's available so that's my odd pods for today who wants to go next ainsley you got something Yes. Uh, first, I want to know if the new recordings will be on accordion. Well, you know, I was thinking <laughs> piano because that's what Aww. everybody is used to. Um, <laughs> but I suppose I could be persuaded to pick up the accordion and do a little bit more um, uh, accordionistic versions of the odes. That's always fun. It's a little harder to sing along with accordion because it's a sustaining instrument. And so generally, I like piano because 
it doesn't get in the way of people singing. However, um, anybody who attends church regularly and they sing along uh, with the church organ, you know, you can get used to it. It's the same kind of thing. Uh, but most people are used to following the piano when they sing the ode. So I generally stick to that. But hey, if I have enough time, maybe I'll do two versions. <laughs> that would be fantastic. I'll go next because I have correspondence from the Grand Lodge of New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, so this is a communications connection that I was able to make through the website. Um, a little bit of backstory, um, as I'm sure most everybody listening hopefully knows by now, I am the webmaster for the Sovereign Grand Lodge, and so I get the duty of answering all the emails that come in through the website. So last month or so, uh, a gentleman had emailed about some chairs that he had, and he was located in upstate New York, and or his mom, I, I think the chairs, I'm sorry, excuse me. The chairs were located originally in upstate New York, and he inherited it from his mother who had passed away. And I guess she had gotten these lodge chairs out of this lodge in New York and um, had gotten them, they were like cane bottom chairs. She got them professionally recaned in the 90s, and they're just these four beautiful lodge chairs. And I have a picture of one of them that was sent. Um, it's probably hard for y'all to make out all the detail, but the um, the back of this chair, this wooden chair is caned, and then the seat looks like a solid seat. But on the top little part there is carved the three links in a 3D kind of, uh, not a relief, but more of like a, it pops out at you. So four of these beautiful uh, different lodge chairs, and this fellow was in New Hampshire, and so I put him in touch with the Grand Lodge of New Hampshire. So um, the Grand Secretary, Ernest Corsi, um, called me on the phone and said that, hey, I want to thank you. We got the chairs. They're going into this lodge. And then he said he was going to send me a little something in return. So I get this letter from him. Dear Ainsley, I want to thank you for referring Robert Harris to the Grand Lodge office. He has donated the four chairs to Webster Lodge Number 24 in Goffstown, New Hampshire. He was very pleased to do so but refused to have his picture taken. His explanation that he lives in a small town, da 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 Anyway, I'll get past that. The information about the chairs, it gives information about the chairs. Um, the, he, we believe that the chairs were made in the 1850s of white oak. So these are old chairs. I've enclosed old regalia that we, require, we acquired from a closed lodge that was going to throw out everything within the hall. This is not the best of the two we acquired, but we thought that your lodge would be pleased to have this item. And so he sent me along with this uh, official correspondence with the seal and the picture of the chair, which I'll have to frame that all up together to go in my lodge hall, is he sent a antique uh, warden's collar, or sash rather, with the old style, heavy silver, like very, this is like the heavy silver kind, so you know it's old. Um, the old style jewels that would be affixed to the regalia. So this is a very, it's in really nice condition. Um, doesn't smell musty dusty like most usually. <laughs> yeah. It still has its, it still has its rosette and all its fringe and wow. it's a lovely item. So yeah, so that's my hodgepodge for the week is I sent somebody some information. They made the connect and the four chairs made it back to the odd fellows instead of an antique shop and they will be used in a lodge and to be enjoyed for hopefully many years to come. And that's what happens when people actually do their part and pick up the, you know, pick the baton off through the pass off. So, yeah, uh, uh, that was my excite exciting little surprise. That's wonderful. Well, thank you yeah. for sharing. All Thanks. right, Sergio, what do you want to share with us in the Odd Podge? So mine, uh, this episode would just be the websites I've been working on on my break from school. Our official website has uh, already been launched, 3 Um, You spell out 3 linksodcastcom We already have quite a bit of um, different international visitors from Sweden, from Norway. We have China. We have your way. We have Finland. We have the Philippines. We have Canada, we, France, all over the place. So uh, I just want to put that out there because I don't think I had finished it on our last episode, but it is up and running. It's 3linksodcast.com. 
So, you know, you can always check it out. And then I also was able to um, finish the website for my lodge. Um, and that's LA Golden Roll, the number 35.com. And that way you could kind of see um, my lodge and the new website we have up and running kind of updated. And that's uh, LA Golden Roll 35.com. And then for our podcast, um, three links oddcast.com so feel free to visit those contact us with any ideas or questions or anything like that or if you know somebody who wants to who's curious about our podcast we also have the podcast streaming on our website as well and that's pretty much it excellent thank you awesome. so much for all of your hard work putting together not just the website for the podcast but making sure that your lodge has a web presence that is super duper important nowadays. It's kind of like 40 years ago, you didn't exist if you weren't in the phone book. Well, <laughs> lodges need a web presence nowadays. It's absolutely critical. Now, how about our guests? Uh, Brother Jesse, anything you'd like to share for the Odd Podge? Thank you guys for you know inviting us to be guests on your on your podcast, Oddcast. Um, it's it's been you know such an honor. Just want to, you know, thank you guys and, you know, just keep it going. Keep it going. And you have our word that, you know, our lives is going to keep pushing this and pushing, you know, for you guys to get more more listeners throughout the world. Well, uh, I'm, thank hoping, you. Thank you. I'm hoping that we can have uh, as big of an increase in listeners after this episode as we did after the last episode with the Grand Master of New York. Because I think every odd fellow in New York downloaded it three times. <laughs> we, we got uh, at least 150 downloads just of that episode, which is pretty darned impressive for a brand new podcast. And what about you, Brother Jesus? Anything you'd like to share in the odd podge? Besides my shirt? Which is amazing I... for our listeners. <laughs> it's Yoda wearing an odd fellow's collar and holding a medallion. It is a really sweet shirt. Who designed the shirt? I love it. Thank you. It, it's one of the things, as you guys mentioned, we tried to rebrand the brand, I guess, the Odd Fellows. It's, it's, it's not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to thank you guys for what you're doing, uh, trying to do something very positive, very helpful for our organization. So, again, thank you for inviting us, and thank you for your great job. Oh, you're Thank so you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can say I am genuinely impressed and very proud of what you're doing with your lodge down in San Fernando. And I'm hoping that with our podcast, we can share your success and other lodges can learn from it and hopefully emulate it. You know, if we could get every lodge to open up and get some activities going on, we would have an amazingly strong order. Agreed. All right. With that, uh, we're just about done here. I do want to mention our next episode is going to be one of those fun ones. We're going to be digging into the tradition of Odd Fellows Cemeteries. Ooh. Perfect, Ooh. perfect topic with fall coming up and the changing seasons, and Halloween is just around the corner, too. Uh, and of course, we have a long tradition in Odd Fellowship of burying the dead and maintaining these cemeteries. Some of them, like the Odd Fellows Rest in New Orleans, have become quite famous. So we're going to talk about Odd Fellows Cemeteries on our next episode of the Three Links Oddcast. So thank you very much, brothers. It is so great to have you on the podcast with all of us today. On behalf of Sergio and Ainsley, I am Toby Hansen saying thank you all for listening.